Yeah, so uh, we're just talking. You know, we, we said, you know what, we should just come do a live and get on and just start just talking like normal, like without, like <laughs> that we're, we're not addressing people. It's like, <laughs> how do, uh, how does David and Philip just chat? Like, like, this is what we do. So I was just asking you, because was it like a couple of weeks ago, you were merged with um, your it's, Lumiere uh, priestess, right? Can I just get me crystal ball? I always like a defense. Uh, about four weeks ago. <laughs> Uh, I've been doing it every week now. And, oh, great uh, sacred space too. They kind of got my appetite. <laughs> yeah. I made some sacred space now too. Just so anybody who logs on. And... Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, so, so, how did you meet this uh, Lemurian priestess? I was doing it. I was healing uh, a patient at the healing center, yeah. and halfway down. You know, when I was, because what you do in healing, you start at the head and you go all the way around because the person's laying on a bed. And I've been starting to create like a, a light bed. So I've been putting crystal source energy under the bed and putting platinum and ray circles going around, up and down. So I've been experimenting with that. And when I got to the feet, my third eye started vibrating really fiercely. And I could feel the crystal in the third eye. The third eye became like a crystal. And then uh, she contacted me. And I tell you, the energy, it was so feminine. I've never felt anything like it in my life. And uh, it was, I tell you what, female energy is a lot more happier than male energy. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And then she contacted me. I've got a name, but it's something like Ezra. Uh, I've got, got it written down somewhere because it's a name I, I'm not very good with names. And, so uh, she was came to you specifically. You're working with this client. Yeah. yeah. And then she was. So did she have connection with this client, or she came to you to? Uh, she, she came to me. A new modality or something. She came to me because it, I was creating the light beds, and she would, she said I was at the level now that she could connect. So it's one of my aspects yeah. that I haven't met, and obviously a female is high vibration. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, I started feeling like a female. Now, one of the other healers has actually seen me shapeshift into her. And she said afterwards, you actually walked like a female. <laughs> she, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't got my dress yet. <laughs> no. Yeah. And has, has she come to you since then? Every, every week. Yeah. It's quite amazing, actually. While you're doing like your healing events or, or just... Uh, while I'm at the healing event, yeah. yeah. Has she ever come to you like to upgrade you or anything while you're sleeping or right before bed? No, I, I do connect with her now and again, not at the healing center. And what's wild about it is like, we haven't talked anything about this. You I brought it up. <laughs> it was on your, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of Lumerian stuff's been coming up and- And, and the masculine and, and feminine joining together. Yeah. I thought it was quite amazing actually when I saw your post the next day and I was thinking, you read me mind there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's um it's really good to tap into that like mm -hmm. I ran into that kind of like feminine energy um when I ran into like a version of Divine Mother. Because I see like a lot of people say, What does Divine Mother and Divine Father look like? Well that depends what level of consciousness, right? On Earth realm they look like humans and stuff. You start going to like a diamond light source they look like the purest light that you've ever seen. Um, so a version, a golden being of Divine Mother, I ran into her maybe a year and a half ago or something on top of the Ascension grids, which is like above the galactic grids. And when I went to that energy, it was just so beautiful, um, so loving. I was literally in bliss for hours afterwards. I think I even might've mentioned it to you when it happened and um, um, it definitely helped me to love the divine feminine at such another level. You know what I mean? Like, and so like after that happened, um, I started doing all this inner work on relationships, abuse and past lives and clearing all this out. And, and I remember when, um, when I was done then I started, you know what, it was really crazy. Then I started seeing lifetimes where I was a woman and uh, and I was using men 
um, like a long, long, long time ago, but I'd use my body to get ahead, you know, and then I had to clear that side of it. And so I, I, I understood that perspective of, um, of advancing. Cause you know, like sometimes in, in life or in circumstances, um, it doesn't seem like there's other ways to get ahead other than doing that. So there's no judgment on anything that we've ever done. Like we're just, we're coming to the conclusion of it all anyways. But, um, once that clearing was done, um, it was, uh, a, it's your, your vibration changes. You think differently. Um, so Definitely. my, my entire life, like I'm, I'm not afraid to admit it, not my entire life, but like from about, let's say 12 when I started getting hormones or 11 maybe until I don't know um, let's say 26 you know before uh, I I sexualized a lot um, I would look at you know go to clubs try to meet women try to do this try to get you know like um, and um, I, th I think I was in that club <laughs> yeah right and and it's a really vicious program because like when you get out of the program then you really see it and, like when you, when it doesn't interest you at all like like when you look at the divine feminine as like a, a beautiful soul um, that is so much more than a body um, then you you don't fall fall into that like you're always looking at somebody oh there's a pretty girl over there look over there oh there's a pretty girl there look over there and what was really strange um back when i was single a while back um i would look see this is the weirdest thing that would happen in my life so if i was driving and i'd almost get into a car accident because i go to go look at a girl or something like that and <laughs> and then they would always look at me Every time I look at them, they look at me. It's like they had eyes in the back of their head. Like you sent the message, it, right? Think. Right, right. Um, but you, you were manipulating your energy. To do I that. know. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit, but like at a year and a half. No, maybe it was a year ago or something like that. Um, and so I was starting to see if I could find somebody that's compatible, and so I'd be tuning into them instead. Like I wouldn't be looking at their body; I'd be tuning into their spirit. And instead of them looking at me, it would be like, like say they're walking down the street, right? Uh, I'm tuning into their energy. I'm not even looking at their, I'm just tuning into their energy. And instead of them doing this, where they just look at me, cause I'm back in the past when I would do that, they would just look at me and like, who's looking at me, right? When you tune into their energy to see if they're a good soul, this is what they would do. They would be like, all of a sudden their head would just shift up and do like a quarter turn looking up almost like their spirit their higher self is like communicating at a spirit level instead of like at a sexual level it's at a spirit level acknowledgement and they don't even know what they're doing they just all of a sudden quarter turn like there's an awareness but it's not that somebody's staring at them it's about spirit right so at another level they're aware um and i thought that was hilarious that that is so that's the one you that's the one you'd pick <laughs> that, that's well, so no, but it, would hap it happened to, all, all, to, to anyone that i would do that to if i'm driving and i just i ah. wonder what they're like as a person and i'm just tuning in to them and um and then all of a sudden the quarter head turn because i'm not sexualized and i'm not looking at their body i'm just wondering who they are as a soul back then when that happened and so i thought it was like the neatest thing ever but you when you are hanging out with um, men who are having healed this, it's always like, look at the body, look at the body, look at the body. Oh, I can't wait. To, you know, I wonder what she's like in bed. Like that's the inverted masculine and stuff. So like doing that in, in our work healing is um, it's so rewarding in so many ways. And eventually everybody's gonna have to go through it one way or another but a ni another nice way to embody the divine feminine is integrating with divine feminine aspects for sure i, I remember when uh, when i first met my wife who's dead now and she had a pack of tarot cards egyptian the same as me mom <laughs> she had a pack oh, yeah. the same which is quite weird but when you were mentioned like I went to meet Source Being about, I think it was about 10 years ago. I was actually at Warrington Healing Centre, a different one. And I actually went and Ashton travelled and met 
source being and it was like an oil lamp you know one of them oil lamps and i got the message you're not going to last very long here <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I'm too yeah. powerful. You better go. And uh, I did. I felt it afterwards. It was too powerful. Yeah, I had a message there. I was work, I was doing a one on one section, and one of these aspects was like uh, a light being from another universe, but an elemental light being who was like like the creator of the original Fey and elemental templates. And it was such a powerhouse, like we were literally there for one second, and then they're like, "You're gonna have to leave now. The energy is too strong here. We just wanted to <laughs> let her know." <laughs> it's like, "No, I'm out. I'm gone. I'm out. See you later. Don't worry." Uh, that rings a bell. Actually, I was at the healing center, and this we had one of these females who could actually get the spirit inside and speak, and it was an alien tenth dimensional, eleventh dimensional, or even higher. And it, afterwards, I was on the healing bed and I thought, I'll channel this. I'll see what it is. And it was a flying, like a, a, a being that could fly, but looked like a fish, flying fish oh, being yeah. sort of thing. And I nearly collapsed. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> I nearly went. So you've got to be careful. I think I could handle it now, but then I couldn't. I nearly fainted whilst I was healing someone. Yeah, you know, there's like, there's somebody that that messaged me that was uh, on the course full embodiment and she's like uh, need some help so I, I like a 911 kind of a thing so I I was fully booked but I just jumped on a call and um, she was doing a bunch of light missions and she and such a crazy mission um, when I tuned in there was so much energy in her house so much she was it was just overpowering and um, you know, I had to like basically work with her to like send it to the solar grid, send it to the earth grids, then ask the guys to come in and clear it, send it where it's got to go. And like within, a, you know, about two or three minutes, we had it cleared. But, you know, if there's like, if, if you are pushing yourself to like go into all these high dimensions and all this high light and stuff, there's definitely repercussions. Like you, you, you won't get sleep. You'll, you'll, your energy will be high, and especially if you don't know how to ground and stuff, then you, get, you know what happens? Dizziness. Um, what you used, you used your halo technique to ground, right? I, I, I use a, a yeah, an halo above your head, and it's slack. I've actually advanced that a little bit. I actually used two spiral ones. And it, the, they normally white light, and they're going from the head, and they go all the way to your, to your feet slowly. But they'll stay where they need, and they'll change color depending on what you need. But uh, so I've changed it to two spirals now. That seems to work that. Excellent way to do it. I used to do the tree method, you know, where you're growing as a tree. Yeah. Something yeah. Like that. that is uh, a good method. Yeah. In the end, uh, I thought I, I need some a bit more. Uh, Lifting and the A levels lifting. Well, then I found out that you could do it for healing as well. But well, funny enough, them two spirals are part of my light bed that I create. Oh, okay. And uh, a few of the healers have started doing that. Yeah, <laughs> so they've started. But it's good to, when you do an healing, like I did four sessions on Tuesday night, uh, it's good to stay in the same bed because you know you don't have to create the light bed every time. <laughs> You've already created it before. Quite amazing, actually. Like that. Yeah, sounds cool. Yeah, working working with light is is an interesting thing. And um, another interesting thing is is the beings that travel through the light. Like most people don't even see what's actually happening with light. It's not just light you're sending. You're sending consciousness. You're sending light beings. You're sending all kinds of angels you send whatever it is that you're intending to send or you're working with is coming through it's pretty fascinating the support that's actually here i was doing a session in um it was like a uh, we, we get together once a week for this full embodiment and uh, we were channeling um, father god in the heavens and he was talking about angel schools and the, how there's even schools of that that things that are being taught to the angels that they're working on 
And what was really interesting is what he said was how they even they work in the eternal now moment because of all the timelines that are happening. They're always working and making specific codes for the timeline and bringing it in. And then when people are doing missions and they get back and they're like, oh, I'm so amazing. I just did all of this and all of this. Well, they're doing all the loose end stuff that you just don't are not aware of. Because like when you're doing a mission, there's so many intricacies he's saying that happen with with grid mergers, with grid connections, with and how it implicates all these other energetic systems. So while we do an upgrade for the planet, the angels are in the background making sure that it doesn't like go to <laughs> like everything collapses in all the other systems. So um, it's great, all the work that everybody's doing, but we have a tremendous amount of support in the back end that's helping us. Like you're, you're being, you're, you're, so what's, what else is she working with you on? You're reading my mind. <laughs> yeah. I, I was waiting for the break and I was going to tell you, so you did read my mind. She's, she showed me pictures, images of, how she worked in the temple. And I actually said, this reminds me of Atlantis. And she said, very similar beings. They are nearly the same sort of beings. Yeah. Just Lemur Lemurian, I think, came first. And Atlantis is like the offshoot, which I didn't know. So, uh, if you don't agree with that, it's okay, it's fine. <laughs> no, it's true. Like, so I've seen, so what had happened was there was a city in Lemuria and um, it was like this, it was like a partially crystallized city. Um, and it was like the, the main city, like the, like where like the king, queen, the royalty of Lemuria and all of the top oracles were and stuff. And at, at least how it was presented to me, and maybe it was a timeline, maybe there's another version of this, but how it was presented to me was that um, the, there was these two families that were feuding near this near the main city and it was eventually going to go into the main city and, and the oracles were were telling the the royalty in charge at the time to to go in at, with to for peaceful resolution but it was like it was it became like a feud and they were worried about like the people in the city they had a family they were worried about their family getting hurt they were worried about lives being lost and they ended up just deciding to like migrate to like reform in another part on earth away from this big feud that was happening and so when that happened um the oracles and a bunch of the people from the city they they, they knew that the heart of lumeria was going to leave basically and and then that's going was going to end this feud and all this now there was no support for the families people call them the, like the 12 tribes or who, who, whoever they are they were exactly uh, but the uh there was more than just Palladians. i know there were syrians and and um, who else was there there was uh, some other racists as well and they ended up the oracles and the ones that didn't want to migrate it was like it was quite a bit there i think there's like hundreds not maybe a thousand people and they showed me how they literally found some kind of a tunnel that went into inner earth and then the priestesses got together and they had this technology that had these crystals around it and it shot up this light they were creating like a star or like a sun-like thing within inner earth and all of the divine feminine priestesses shot their um heart energy to bring in the akashic records and and all of what they knew and, and they just put it in there so those vibrations would be easier to access for our reality as soon as we are ready to expand in it. And they're still sitting there and they're still there to this day. Like all these oracles and, and these um, extraterrestrials from Lumeria. So that was kind of interesting. The, the, the actual crystal we mainly use was gold crystal. Uh, at least a little bit on this planet, but not a lot. So it's gold crystal, and uh, that's what's on top of the pyramids in the olden days. And what I've been told by this uh, Memorian princess, the 30th chakra, chakra 30, 
is the same energy. It's the same energy as the. So if you channel that in, you're getting yeah. basically the old stuff. Old stuff. Yeah, which, which is it essentially like when this shift happens we are going to shift into that vibration or very close to it anyway and uh that's what i've been saying like i don't know why like i just keep posting to do the inner work to do the inner work because i i know what happens when this integration happens it's just a sloppy mess and people are gonna you know need a lot of help this is why it's like a lot of people think everything's going to be perfect but there's it's, it's not it's going to be a lot of people who need a lot of help and so uh, and it, it could be people who are watching if, you, if you've been avoiding inner work it's going to bite you um, when the shift happens and uh, so my message has been for probably a year and a half I've been saying do the inner work do the inner work do the inner work and then I stopped talking about it for maybe a couple months and then the divine showed me the vision of what actually happens to the people who aren't. And it's not nice. And there's a lot of people getting sick. There's a lot of people who are dying. There's a lot of people because every force integration, it, like we've had years and years to do this and integrate and to release. And in one moment, there's a shift that happens into another frequency. and people who haven't dealt with their consciousness to clean this up within themselves will have to then i mean it, it to me for me it does, like i'm i'm all right but i'm I, i'm saying these messages to help other people uh, who haven't done the inner work yeah the thing is david the, the higher vibration people get the less likely they're going to be ill even even with all the like the water and whatever's in the sky and whatever we eat if the vibration is high you you can transmute all negative energies anyway. Yeah, yeah. you get less sick as mm. well, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I've I've seen that firsthand. Like, uh, we're family members of mine who've been sick for two weeks, and I get something, and I'm able to overcome it within a few hours. Push it right out of my energy, even in some cases where I don't even get. I can feel it's about to start, and I just take it and take push it right out of my energy i'm like i'm like this just it's code it is a code in a way right you know just but take, the, prob the problem you can just is take, people have you traumas, take it off them, right don't. just take it off yeah but when people are like going through suffering or they're going through like if you got an illness or something funny um it could elicit lower vibrational energies to make a worse impact or if you're going through like a lot of family situations and stuff like that and that brings down your vibration then you you're likely going to get sick that's why like the vibration is the currency right mm. a lot of people get blocked because of trauma in their life you just got to get rid get rid of it i know it's hard i know it's difficult well you had a story about somebody who who could yeah do you want, are you allowed to share it in here or is it yeah actually it was well it's on our healing event and uh she's wanting to do light language for 20 years and we shifted trauma from a child and then she, all of a sudden it just came out she just did light language and she was doing it all week she told us and she'd been wanting to do light language for 20 years <laughs> and it, it was the uh, i call it like the indian one you know the yik yik yik, that one it, it was like that it was amazing to see it actually the, the actual light language she was given actually gave me uh, quite an emotional experience absolutely but obviously, uh, light language has got power in them, in them words. It was brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, that's really cool. Brilliant, brilliant to see. Yeah. And that is something that's true. When you shift your vibrations, it will unlock gifts of yours. I mean, you might not know it right away, but mm -hmm. I mean, you you unlock when you go into higher vibrations, and when you do inner work, you shift fast. Mm -hmm. fast. When well, that Lemurian uh, priestess, I think she is actually. I can feel the energy change. I can feel that energy coming out. It's it's a lot different than the, the first. Let's talk thing. about this because uh, when did you start noticing that we were in a game of merging with aspects and merging, becoming? When I met Evra, we did an event. Yeah. We were we were get we were doing uh, grid work, probably light grid work and uh she appeared next to me it's it's one of my aspects it's a 
It's one of the highest vibration. It's a crystal source being, and she looks like a diamond, blue diamond, right across but a structure of a human, but it with diamonds in. And she was laughing at me. And pardon the French, but she said, humans are crap at fixing the grids. Let me do it. Yeah, and what she did, I think she twisted the energy and all of a sudden it just shot, shone out of her. It was amazing to watch. But I didn't eat. We went on that event. I didn't expect that. <laughs> that was the yeah. end of that event. I started merging with her. To, we to, were doing like, um, I think, was, think there was, was like a Lauren. big, like, was a big battle or something going on. And we had to do like a huge grid clearing. Wasn't yeah. that it? And they had so. done some damage on the grids. And so we were doing grid repair work. Right, and that's when she showed up to like basically give you like a slap on the wrist. <laughs> Come on, what kind of sloppy grid work is this? But she was yeah. laughing at the work we were doing. Yeah, <laughs> it was that you bad? Yeah, so. When you are a crystal bean. Mm. But yeah, it. she's the first time I started merging, and sometimes you can merge with two, three, or four uh, aspects. And when I go on the events, sometimes I do warrior work. So I'll bring Hermes with me because he like comes out of his hand or oh, I'll bring Raphael. I'll bring warriors with us. Warrior to, to do the warrior work. And then if it's healing, it's it's I, I choose which being now. The good thing with uh, the Andromeda seed part and also the crystal source being I can get into people's uh, Kashik and if they've got I can actually start helping their blueprint if they really are. So partly healing is actually, it's like a cheat in, it, in a way. <laughs> Getting into cashing and sometimes rubbing out problems, which is well against what I should be doing, but why not? I always believe you, some, of them, some people choose what they want to experience here, but as a human, they might not want that anymore. Free will, so I pick the person here, not the person before they went in here, if you get what I mean. Do you get what I mean by that? Um, yeah, I think I, I think you're you're saying like you're not taking like who they were in the past life or something. Yeah. You're talking no, about. no. Was, what, what they do, they they want to experience an illness, say some serious cancer, something. So they come into the body and they go and experience this. But when they're at, inside the body and the human, they don't want that. Yeah. So I pick that one, not the other yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, well, that's a whole th other story, uh, but I want to. We could talk about um, soul contracts and stuff like that. But this merging, um, I just wanted to mention about it was something somewhere around um, 2020 when all of a sudden, like, first there was some an archangel. They said, "I'm going to merge with you." And I'm like, "Okay." And. Um, what I didn't realize, so there's there's like three beings, then there's this ascended master who wanted to merge with me. And um, one of my aspects wanted to merge with me. So by the third one, I was like, is this, a, this is a thing, like these aspects merging. What I didn't realize is that they're integrating with you. Um, what I didn't realize is at the time is that they're bringing higher knowledge for you stuff the thing is we would have been doing this all our lives yeah we, they not? We, we just didn't know <laughs> oh yeah. yeah i mean that's that's likely it too right like who knows maybe you're like because this is a thing that you learn about um in the master series is that the light beings they have these soul bonds and soul contracts um so they can come down and help us out at any time because they're they are very much a higher aspect than us and they can experience like this physical reality in a way through like the soul bond that happens. So on one hand, they're assisting you becoming more of a light being. They're assisting you on your enlightenment or, or in your spiritual or soul advancement. And on, but on the other hand, they don't have to incarnate and have all the drawbacks. And so they can experience a, a lot of through a soul bond that you have. So it's kind of fascinating, these soul bonds. Um, uh, I, I must admit, the, the aspects enjoy it as well. Yeah, they do. They, they, they experience it just as you experience their knowledge. Uh, Hermes was the one who gave me the halo, so he gave me that 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. 
So each aspect gives you, but they get the the human aspect of it. Which is yeah, pretty good. Yeah, there's one time um, this terrestrial being came into my field and might have been at like a 4D level and he was just wanting to, to feel what it was like how I connect with the sun. He's just, he just, he found it fascinating. And he, so he, he joined up in my energy and literally he stayed with me for an hour. I, I did the sun connecting and he felt the light, felt the experience, how I connect. And then he left. He's like, he's just like, thanks. That's what I wanted to experience. And it was just fascinating um, that, you know, other other beings out there are that fascinated in in what we're doing you know like we think of ourselves a lot of times that we're lesser than all these advanced technological races but a lot of these races they forgot or they had had not had the opportunity to advance spiritually like we have on planet earth here during all this time for the greys for example and i think this being was a gray that came and greys you might say well ha they're physical being but they have abilities to basically shoot through ceilings shoot through walls and they have technology that can make them more energetic than physical and that's how this being ended up coming to experience sun connecting because it was a new experience. So they have, yes, they have advanced more technolog technologically and everything. And that was their issue is they advanced so fast technologically speaking that they couldn't figure out how to ascend and how to power the spirituality. And as a matter of fact, we're like such a leading example for them right now but it, what the, we're doing the thing is we've got source inside us all of us we our over soul is part it's the aspect of source so we're source beings so that's why that's why they'd be interested yeah that's why that what they ended up doing um they had a and this was a soul contract where people get abducted and they're like and they're, and they're giving eggs and all this stuff it was something you agreed to if that's ever happened to you and, it, and like, why would i agree to that <laughs> it's why would you agree to like for something bad to happen to you what it's the same way you agree to something good it's another experience but it's actually a novel experience it's a novel contract to sign up for because you're helping a race um ascent by giving them um a blueprint that mixes with their blueprint so that they can to get back into the spiritual birthing and the spiritual uh, being. So it's, they become more human, they become more in their heart. And so they had this whole program of abductions that went on for decades to help repopulate um, the light within the greys. So as awful as it may sound, at a level, we're all one. And if there's a race out there that wants to ascend and wants to become a light being and eternal, and they need to re, they need your eggs um, at a level, it's the most novel thing to do to help them out. To help, you're helping out an entire race, an entire planet, an entire species that could have many planets. Uh, it's very novel as much as it is very difficult it is, in my opinion, uh, a beautiful thing to it's, assist. It's a, it's a complex subject, though, isn't it? Because, well, would it, yeah. it would be a lot nicer if it was done in uh, in upfront and honest free way. Free will, yeah. Yes, free will. The way that they did it, it caused a lot of trauma, and that has to. We've many of us have worked to clear that out of um, every all of the akashic records and stuff because at some point everything is peaceful and 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 all beings have to have that integrity and that upfront honesty to honor the free will because it's uh yeah, when you mentioned about the sun this part but i didn't mention earlier about this light bed i was making at the end i actually bring in central sun and it's like a cocoon around the body and it gets absorbed into the aura field 
and that's quite amazing to see. But I can actually feel it coming out of your hands. It's power, power itself. I, I think it's like sourcing to be honest, central something. Oh, oh, so it's it's definitely a, a universal higher vibration of solar consciousness than our sun is. There's mm. no question. It's a it's a higher point. Yeah, for sure. Um, and when you are doing things like breathing in the sun and bringing it to your, not only are you um, healing your fields, repairing fields, and integrating universal consciousness, but you might be surprised there might be a solar being that wants to give you a hand, maybe a, a soul bond that wants to come and help you out in your life. Maybe it'll, it'll work with you to inspire to write a book on uh, the ascension or to uh, paint light language and sell art light language art or start a school to help you know um, stay at home kids that uh, could involve discussions on spirituality and stuff too right like there's it could be anything that is usually to advance you as a soul and to help you on your divine path and stuff it's a really I, beautiful support network we yeah have. I, I have noticed children now are very very there's a lot of star seeds coming through so many. My, my granddaughter is now like the, the, crystals. The, the, ch <laughs> the children of this of this are going to be able to do some of the most amazing things. They are so special. They really are. Um, you know, and I think that the awakened parents of this world will see that instead of thinking of their children as a child. Now, of course. You're going to have to discipline and have rules and, and help your child grow. But the insight of it, them just being a child when they could potentially be the most powerful being in the universe that could help a trillion hearts, could help with technology of this realm, put it hundreds of years into the future. Like these are the people, the beings that are coming. To this planet now they're 12 dimensional beings that are coming through rainbow children golden childs uh and the knowledge that an Good. experience that they have is just unbelievable yeah when that when i was teaching at the uh, i'll be doing it again anyway i was teaching uh, crystal therapy at the school which is basically even the crystals a five-year-old had so much knowledge knew all the chakras knew the colors knew everything and i was thinking Wow. <laughs> yeah. Is, and you can see the star seed in the eyes. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing to see. Yeah. Stardust, I thought. Stardust. Too. So we were talking about soul contracts and everything um, just a few minutes ago about how you were choosing the one with the person really wants. And um, when it comes to soul contracts, it's good to know that you can change them. Luckily, I'm a walkie. I don't have contracts, so I can break. I can break anyone's rules. I don't. Care. I haven't got any rules that stop me to do that. They don't like it, but they can't stop me. At the end of the day, it's a choice. Isn't it? Yeah. And what I found is with the soul contracts from the divine level, they're encouraging to remove the 3D soul contracts and add in 5d contracts instead higher oh, divine experiences That's so, better, isn't it? yeah yeah so it's, it's definitely something but what gets me is most contracts aren't good <laughs> you don't get a good experience but it's not many it tends to be bad experiences why would you want a bad experience well it's it's because the good ones aren't talked about because everybody's having a good time <laughs> right I, I look at it as like it's just a forever experience and it may not make sense now um, but there is more than always meets the eye sometimes people are attracting that experience as well from that's their true. vibration that's true I agree with that that's why inner work another reason why inner work is so important <laughs> Because your vibration, when you change it, it automatically law of attraction kicks in. Another experience yeah. pulls in. 
the other things. Um, so anything else new that's been happening to you over the last few uh, months? My, my IT is getting attacked as usual. <laughs> that's what is? Me IT. That's why I've got this. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's why I've got this right next to me. Shunga. Oh. Massive. Like, thing. yeah. But it did fry my computer last weekend or two weeks ago. Uh, I, I lost a couple of years of me uh, account on it. Yeah. So, but it's my own fault. I should have had back up promptly. Did you have like business files on there? Yeah, some of that went. Uh, we got into it, but some of it had gone. But we managed to get get some of the information out. But uh, I should have uh, I should have had it on a spare disk of some sort. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a lesson in it. It's my own fault. Yeah. Um, so and it's, doing... it's, all, it's only three D anyway. So. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. And all of the things that you see. What's the thing that you find people have the most challenges with? That's a deep question. Well, you see a lot of people on your monthly healings, right? Mm. And they're like marathons, That's true. Like, like five, six hours sometimes. I think uh, I do notice that it's okay to heal someone. You can get you can get someone in really good condition. But when they go, if they don't change their ways and how they create this, a few weeks later, or a month later, they'll be back with the same. So yeah. healing, it's okay healing people, but they've got to do some inner work as well. They've got, they've got to stop the path how it, how it achieved that. And sometimes it's changing your journey a bit. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed that a lot. Yeah, I mean, it could be a variety of things. Um, let's say it's a, a, a relationship with somebody who's not uh, awakened. Mm. And let's say this person yells at them, yells at the family, yells at work, is unhappy, brings the morale down, is abusive. That person is going to attract entities. And if it doesn't matter if you're awakened, it's going to affect you. And at a level, you had a soul contract with this person. So then, what do you do? I mean, you really, you got to practice spiritual hygiene and cleanse that person. You got to set up grids. You got to like clear the energy of the room. You got to clear their energy all the time. Whenever they come, once you clear their energy, they're good. But you also got to create boundaries. It's not okay for people to yell at you and be abusive. I mean, it can be complicated if there's children involved, but what is a child going to see when he sees that it is okay for the dad to yell at the mom? Then the child's going to yell at the mom because dad does it. So if you don't create the boundary, you're not teaching the kid and you're not being respectful to yourself. And I know this might, anybody who's going through this situation probably hates my guts right now, but if you have an open, honest conversation and say, I'm not going to accept this anymore, it's abusive and provide an ultimatum. And if it keeps up, I'll, I'll find another place where I can be happy because right now I'm not. So shape up or I'm shipping out. And those tough decisions, yeah, it's a tough conversation. Yeah, how are you gonna live by yourself and start anew and do all this? Then you gotta get a job, all these things. That's self-respect. That's self-love. And that is setting a good example for for y your children as well. And it's, though it's the hardest thing to do, build up the courage, you got a support network. Call in the angels, call in your aspects to support you, to get you through this. Call on friends, talk to your friends, ha ask for help, you know, because a repetitious abusive cycle, it, it the soul contract ends when you don't accept the abuse anymore. The soul contract is done. And every time that you accept another thing that he says or, if, or another thing that he does, you are giving away your power. And it could be another opposite way. It could be a woman who's abusing a man. It happens. Um, not as often physically, but emotionally, 
um, with with um, different things that they're doing. Maybe it could be a guy who's constantly getting cheated on and betrayed, and then but he doesn't want to miss out on this love, and he's where he's not going to find another person, and, and so he accepts it. He accepts, you know, maybe this is all I'm worth, and this is all I'm. But then you're attracting the same pattern. The soul contract ends when you say, "That's it. I've had enough. I'm not going to accept it." But it doesn't have to end in that way. You can have the discussion. You can give the other person the opportunity for them to heal themselves, for them to change. You know, I, I, I want to say something. You, you're now going on to what I wanted to say. <laughs> okay. This is from the Lemurian Princess, by the way. A light worker. You're there, and all your family's against you. All the friends, everyone around you is against you, and it lowers your vibration. Your job is to lift their vibration, and that's exactly what you were going there. It's your job to try and make them into your this same level, if you get what I mean. Yeah. So if you feel like everyone's against you, you don't have to go within and go down. Go up and send, give them healing. It fix them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can because you especially because you have the soul bond. Like you yeah. start working between your mutual akashic records and start clearing out everything between your past lives and stuff. And if you don't know how to do it, find a healer who does. Mm. That'd be the best three, four hundred dollars you ever spent in your life. And this is all you do: clear all of my past lives and all of the relationship issues that myself and my husband has had and you know it will be a million times better if you get your husband or your girlfriend or whoever it is your wife on the call with you and you just say look we're having a lot of problems and maybe some of it's past life and I, I want to get to a healer um, this is insane if you don't know how to do it I want to get a healer booked something special will take an hour of our time just to clear out all the fights all these things that we've had in our akashic records and um if you can find a good healer you'll be able to they'll be able to tune into some of the big common things and they'll likely be linked to a repetitive pattern that's happening in this life and so you'll be able to clear up all these different root causes and you'll understand a lot more and then when you're there watching it together he integrates it or she integrates it with you um and you both will come closer together it's best investment if there's a relationship problem for sure if the other thing dave if you ever if anyone out there ever gets triggered by anything it's your you you need to do work inner work because you shouldn't get triggered by anything you can send love and let go but if you get triggered by something there's some healing that you need sorting out some and, it's, and it's good and it's good sometimes the the most irritating things are the biggest lessons Mm, you know, and definitely. You can, when you can overcome those, I mean, life gets better. And yeah, maybe. And then you don't get the same thing that happens if it happens in the future. Once you clear it, it doesn't bother you again. No, it's not to say you do the clear. You don't have boundaries because this is the thing. When you do the inner work, you have more boundaries. You, you're like you'll never fall for a negative pattern. Very seldomly will fall for a negative pattern. And when you do, you quickly bounce back up um, but it's you'll have more boundaries more self-love more self-respect um, your vibration will be higher so you won't have to worry so much about like the dark side and the density beings because they once you hit a level they're very difficult for them to uh, interfere with you and stuff so yeah I mean we keep saying there's so there's like a million benefits of doing the inner work it's so like it to attract to manifest it'll, it'll, you'll become more abundant you'll be more happy like there's it just doesn't stop um what i find the issue is with most people in is they don't commit they don't commit to themselves and so they can come up with a million excuses i don't have time i don't have money i don't have this i don't have that it's the ones who succeed find the one reason why to do it for me i went broke on healers before i could finally figure out how to do it and for me it was like a, i spent everything all like i spent my savings i spent this i spent that sometimes i wouldn't eat 
And my friends would say to me, you're crazy. Why are you spending all of your money on healers? I'm like, well, you're spending all your money on booze or you're spending your money on women or you're spending your money on stocks. Now, let me tell you, which one are you going to take away with, with you when you die? Because like, I'm pretty sure the soul is the best investment. So I, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to stake my money on my soul. You stake your money on your booze or your women or your stocks and we'll see in the end what was the better I, investment. I can, I can just imagine wheeling up to the gates of uh, um, uh, heaven with, with a, what is it, a pack of uh, Tia Maria. <laughs> with a pack of what? Hell yeah. Tia, Tia Maria alcohol. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got my stock market shares with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, it's like, ah, oh, I, I, I thought that Apple investment was the best. <laughs> But yeah, soon enough, though, the whole entire planet is going to realize that this is, this, there's nothing that is more important than the planet and everybody on it, you know. But the, the only time Spirits ever told me about a future event uh, that was to make money was when 1999, they said, Man United is going to win the treble. And I had about 16 matches to go, and I phoned my dad and I said, Dad, are you going bookies? He said, yeah, put 200 pounds on. I won three grand after that. They don't tell me anything. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they were telling me is, uh, you know, it's like a conversation. Yeah. But I thought, hold yeah, on, yeah. hold on, this is more. I'm going to have to work on yeah. this one. Yeah, um, and ever since then, you've been trying to pick the Akashic Records to win the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and the irony of it is you're getting like three or four numbers which is out of six, right? Like, I only got five into that. I always seem to win on it, but uh, yeah, I, I, I always seem to be close. It's like a lesson, isn't it? Let's just be near, but not quite there. Yeah. Yeah, the best was when I got three numbers on one line and the second, the other three numbers, and they matched if you actually yeah, lifted them. Yeah, and I was thinking, yeah. it, it's definitely something in this, but they're just taking the mic out of me, aren't they? Yeah. Remember when you bet that 200 on that fight? Then, if you ever get tuition, by the time I was, I was, Sophie actually mentioned just before you do a lot, you got to be really high, you got to be dancing, you got to be really feel good. Do the numbers that you do. But I changed my mind on two of them, and I would have won the jackpot. So, always yeah. intuition, first thoughts, yeah. always count. Yeah, for sure. It's like with anything with life too, right? Whatever you feel within your heart intuition your gut feel always go with the first instincts don't let your brain think for you <laughs> only gets you in trouble <laughs> Surely. Yeah. so in the past couple of months is there anything else well i mean everything's just shifting you know there's there's big dark beings that are getting turned into light there's there's a lot of people waking up yeah tons of that the a lot of dark templates being removed out of the the humanity collective level and stuff and um, but yeah I mean I was asking what guidance can I get for people because there's so many people they 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 can use the shift as an excuse not to live their life and to, that it's going to save you and, and ultimately you're still here when it happens your problems are still here um it's not it's just the end of all suffering so it's, it's the beginning of the end of all suffering so there'll still be suffering there'll still be all these things that got to get cleaned up and you'll still have this reality that you've started to create so don't stop don't wait don't wait to do inner work don't wait to do consciousness expansions don't wait to live your dreams don't wait just do it just do what is in your heart to do and come up with a reason to do it. Don't come up with a reason not to do it. Otherwise, I mean, it's like Henry Ford, whether you believe you can do it or you can, you're right. Everybody can say, I don't, I'm just gonna wait or I can't do it because of this or I can't do it because of that. It's just excuses. If it's a money thing, get another job, figure out another way, talk to a friend. There's a million different ways. different ways to do it and um, you just got to find one 
and but it's to do it for yourself right i mean and especially when it comes to like doing something that is a passion something that has been on your mind that you wanted to do your entire life that's kind of like a gift that's sitting on the shelf and it's been on your mind for like 10 years just do it pull it off the shelf dust it off it's a bit like turn it on it's a bit like us watch talking tonight i could have thought i'll put the telly on and watch a film <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, a film that i've probably seen before and i'm just watching it over just wasting your life or like what kids are doing now on game boys you know playstations it's wasting your life i know i know that's a whole other thing like with the uh technology and staying inside and not having that interaction but guess me connecting with nature <laughs> people don't realize this technology is old technology this is ancient technology that they just decided to give us to control to put us in like a control in it it's a control definitely because yeah. I, i do think if you play uh, games playstation games it does lower your vibration into like an anger and it, it lowers it and, you know living right? well if you're competitive and if you're upset that you're losing <laughs> <laughs> yep. My my son's gone through one one screen and two my mouse mice. Yeah. Of the game. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, no, I know. Like um if I I do let my son um play video games, uh, but I tell him if he gets going to get angry and yell, I'm going to turn it off. He's not going to be allowed to play it. Exactly. And uh it, uh after I did turn it off a few times, and I just let the tell him to go to the room think about you know what made you angry what made you upset and then I go up you know 10 minutes later or 15 minutes later and I just be like so now that you've had some time to think about it what made you upset so he he was what was this it was this that made me I'm like, I'm like you know it's just a game right <laughs> right like it doesn't you're not going to get hurt playing it no one who plays this game is going to get hurt But look how you're reacting. You know, no, no, no. If you start well, smashing you, stuff up, yeah, it might. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing too, right? Mm. But uh, do you want to see um, if there's anything to do in Astral? Anything to do maybe to assist anybody watching? Or... Yeah. I, I was thinking, David, we could send Ealing out. We could do your astro first, but it could be after send Ely and try and merge with higher aspects and send that energy out. What do you think? Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, if you want to do astro, no, oh, let's just do a healing. So well, I'm going to probably a million people that 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 have aches and pains or sick or this or that. And um, so, so are you are you are you trying to merge with any aspects that I don't know? I became aware of a level recently that I wasn't aware of before but it's like it's one stage below prime creation where everything is one and it's basically like it's essentially the oversoul level as one so your oversoul and they call it unisource um and so it's like your where your soul is one all of your everything that's within your oversoul is this level just below prime creation so I'll probably tap into that and then like my universal self and then um view everybody from like the cosmos and then sort of see what their fields are depleted in and then fill it up with codexes of healing and, and light codes that they need basically is is likely what I'm going to do probably uh, I I I'll uh, partially merge with the Mirian princess Evra and Hermes, all three of them, so that's four. And all of them are over 70 anyway, so. If I burn out, <laughs> I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> all right, brother. Well, we'll set the intention that no one's going to go on the other side. Um, okay. Also, so, so, this is for healing. This is for healing, light, physical healing. Listen, you want to just do physical healing? Like an yeah, actual physical, I'm yeah, also Andromeda seed part as well. Me a drama just part or coming. Okay. Yeah, let's do a physically. All right. 
right. Hopefully, I won't uh, shape shift into anything. You want to combine fields so that our, our, our teams are working together on this? Yeah. Or, okay. It's up to you. higher selves right now into the planet without sending the golden codes and just giving me the energy it's, it's actually quite a bit of people who are watching or who are going to watch this quite a lot hundreds yeah. all right so i'm actually going to do something where i call it like um uh, similar fields similar conditions so i, I can deal with groups at once understand what's going like we're all sending in healing and light streams, but I just want to see common problems that people are having. Clusters are the same. The field codexes. I can feel a lot of bad backs. I'm bringing in the 30th chakra uh, crystal, gold crystal, uh, using the colors of mine. A lot of people I'm seeing with low, like um, calf and joint pain around the calf muscle. And like the sh the low the back of the shin and in into the foot. I don't, I don't know why, but I'm just gonna take care of this. It's like an inflammation, in the energy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of this cluster of these codes. Our people codes. I'm gonna take these codes. Okay. Let's see what the other stuffs about. So this will leave the joint pain. Stomach issues. Okay. And acid build up. Acid building up in people's systems. Alright, so let's just alleviate that. I'm okay. being told if you've got something wrong with you, send it to your 11th chakra to change it. You do it, just send it. Delete. All right. So you just feel like the, the stomach issue. It'll just start to like you just feel energy just leaving and changing, and all of a sudden settling almost like you're drinking like a like a ginger ale soda and it just settles the, the stomach you just feel that uh, let's see what the next cluster Same alien planet. Yeah, why, why are we just that. sending it to like people who are watching? So we'll send it to the people who are watching, but okay, now we're, we gotta work with Well, it's because the energies are so much, we need more light. If uh, anyone watching this wants to link with us to our alien planet,
This reminds me of when uh, when we were Hermes and Tuff, we used to merge. Give Toth a batter up, but he, he actually got killed by the bad guys defending Egypt. And this whole story got manipulated. There's just so much energy to work with. There's so many different strands. Um, I'm just going to send, connect this to my or soul right now. I put it on autopilot and send on that level. So it'd be much easier. So now you want to go to the sun. I was just thinking, can we bring central sun in to our sun? So okay. what, what comes out of the sun is central sun. Is that possible? We can merge solar grids. Let's do it. And whoever's got that pain, ah, oh, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh no, we can't. We're not ready to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, bring in the uh, ascension too quick. <laughs> it's like around the central sun, you have a lot of like um, high, like 7D type of planets. And so we are not going to 7, like there, you can access 7D on Earth, but we're not sending into 7D. We're sending into like a very high vibrational 5D heart based reality. So we merge the central sun. It's eventually the Earth will send to 7D. It's just not ready yet. They're saying, I was trying to merge the grids and they're like well, you got you can't there were some things we we're allowed to bring some energies we we're allowed to bring through from the central sun but not allowed to merge it you can uh, bring in like 60 70 80 chakras but you know like you can you can merge with the central sun every you mm -hmm. can you can merge it with and upgrade your grids so let's let's do that for everybody who's watching anybody the solar grids of the central sun who is ready for this i mean we don't want to overdose anybody with life <laughs> no let them decide they're saying let them decide so, yeah. they want to okay so they said those who are ready will agree so only those who are ready and like honestly if you're if you have even only if it is instantly yes then we'll, we'll they'll upgrade your solar grids to the seven the higher level of the central sun so we're just going to bring that in to the people who are saying yes instantly, who are truly ready. Um, you're like getting hit by like a big blast. Um, and if you did say yes and you knew 100% and you're going through an upgrade, you're definitely going to want to ground after this, go for a walk or something. If it's too much for you, just close it. Yeah. Galactics, they want to invite you to call in one of your galactic aspects right now. It could be a Lyran, it could be a Palladian, an Arcturian, um, but they are watching this and they are aware through the light that we're bringing in that they can easily come down your light strand and merge with you. So whoever's ready, who truly wants to integrate with an aspect of themselves that is a galactic being, just call it in and they are going to come in now to merge with your field. 
Yeah, me, me and Dave worked together in the Galactic so. Well, that's Lots of, lots of Galactics coming down. It's good. It's good to see that, and you know that's going to help you out on your path. And you'll feel it. You'll, you'll be feeling like home is merging with your field. aspect that you just merge with they're showing me how that part of your DNA is going to awaken within you and so just that will unlock gifts just that um, when are they you're just gonna have to wait and see or expand or get into consciousness expansion See light going up all over Earth now. Yeah, it actually helps with um, grid points and star seeds. Because um, when you integrate with an aspect, not only does it awaken your DNA, all of a sudden this energy comes in to you and then goes through you and goes into the Earth's grids. And it's like a key codex that sends out two other star seeds on the planet, maybe children, maybe teenagers, to that code, that soul tribe that you're part of. And it sends it to them to help awaken it within them. Um, it's very beautiful how this all works. This is why the global awakening has happened. It's all of these grids, all of these integrations, all of these things that we've anchored in. It goes to other people. It shifts grids and it brings in higher consciousness to other people and then it opens them up so like we're so connected that is quite poetic how how it works I'm, uh, I'm sending central sun to everyone's aura field. Yeah, they're showing me there's still something to do with the sun, the actual sun, so I'm going into it. Wow. I'll probably open my eyes and wear a dress. <laughs> For me, Lemurian time. All right, so we're in the sun right now, and the golden template for the golden star seeds. This is for the golden children to help them awaken. And we're just going to send it to all these these kids on the planet who to help them open up. Remember, um, is that through the light grid? Yeah. of the like star symbols like seven star symbols in blue you know like forming like a pyramid putting seven stars seven sided because you're working with the solar bodies that are connected to the celestial consciousness and you're anchoring it in um, through stars it looks like it looks like you're working with stars to anchor it into these people star consciousness it's just a way to do it for sure it's all part of the solar grids it's
you say a lot that constantly, right? Yeah. Golden Stardust. Starlight being goddess just came out of it. light um, they're scented female beings light beings they they're people who are reaching out to them across the planet they, at a level they're here you know they, they they're, bringing a new, they're bringing in new levels of source everybody on the planet right now. Higher levels are opening up a lot of gateways. What were we saying? They remind me of Egyptians. Wow, they are powerful. Holy smokes. They're doing crazy crown activations. Just like so powerful. They are removing word um i shouldn't say that it's a better way of saying it um, they are doing an ancestral collective healing on shame and guilt um, and they clear out of the genes for future generations and stuff um to help the newborns Planets. Um, it's interesting. It's for the ascension. It's a gift of the guides. Become brighter as we are illuminated. Beings of love. They're in the okay. Like the golden cities of light. They're from the golden cities of light. Their DNA template restores. So they're clearing this out for the children right now. And all those who are being born. Use grounding, use 
the trees, the halo, the code, all the tools. Okay. So I think, Phil, we can just go into grounding mode at this point to help everybody. Yeah, it's... I was just changing the, this energy to try and also clear people's, if anyone's got any implants, implants. I know we've tried to get rid of them loads of time. So I'm just asking that. So are we doing grounding then? Okay, if you want to do that, I'll do a grounding tool. Band grounding, grounding, grounding through the Merkava, grounding through the Merkava, grounding through the Merkava, grounding, 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 grounding. Okay. All right. That actually might work. Never thought of doing a Merkava grounding before. Can I do my halo one? Yeah, do your halo. Uh, anyone who wants to join me, visualize and while two halos go in spiral at, the, at your crown chakra, above your crown chakra, light green, Gable's light energy going round and round, and it just goes slowly into your crown chakra, and it's clearing, it changes colour, it needs clearing, and it's going all the way from your crown chakra to your third eye, and going down to your and it's going down, it's pushing down and down, goes into your throat chakra, and then slowly, slowly down, slowly down, breathe, nice big breaths, and let it fire in, and then let it out, and then it goes to your heart chakra, heart chakra, and if any emotions, just let it take it away. And it might turn green to nourish your heart chakra, and go to your sacral chakra, uh, solar plexus, and your sacral, all the way to your root, all the way, and then let it go down to your feet. Just nice and breathe. And they said that they said they do the tree one too, so just we'll do that. So just think of a tree in your yard or out on the street or somewhere, a tree that you know, somewhere close by. And with intention, just merge your consciousness with it and tell this tree to take all of your excess light and funnel it down through the tree and into the grids, just sending it out of your field into the grids, all these extra light that you don't need. You only want the light for the integration that you need. And basically merging with the tree, you become the tree and the light comes out of you, down the roots, out to the grids, out to all those that need it. And again, take the deep breath through the top of the tree that you are, down the roots, out the roots, out your feet, into the grids, all the surplus energy. It's amazing. Can I do another one? This is yep. the one that I used to do as a child. Okay. 10 year little seed. So you've got to visualize the little seed in the soil. And then you grow into a big, massive oak tree and you collect all the energy. And then you do a reversal and then push it down into the sand, into the uh, into the ground. Uh, that takes all the energy that you've got excess into it. Yeah, but I'm okay. Yeah, that's what I used to do as a kid. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so you have a YouTube, don't you? What's your YouTube these days? The one that you use? Yeah, and what subscribers? <laughs> no, no. Like, what's like if anybody wants to see some of your healing videos? Uh, Philip Barrow, Raphael. I think we've done thirty, and this will end up on it because you know what I'm like. <laughs> you say Philip Barrow, Raphael? Yeah. I think the other aspects have got a point of saying, where's ours? <laughs> Why is it only Raphael? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Raphael was my early one, and uh, that's why he's been with me all my life. Yeah. And seeing a, a sword grow out of your hand from your arch, I can't say And if anybody's wondering where to start on your inner work, I have a site, it's called uh, Master's Journey mastersjourney.podia.com and just find the uh, course called the Body of the Master Series. So I wish that that was there when I started my path, but 
There you go, put, put a link.